God wants you to prosper, not somebody else, not someone down the street, but he wants you to prosper. He promises to be our exceeding great reward. God has a great plan for you. Third John, verse two, it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Well, good morning, good morning. It is a beautiful Sunday morning, and this is an opportunity for us to hear again from God. If you would, bow with me. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence. Thank you for the encouragement that you're going to give. Thank you for the reminders that you're going to give. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to each and every one of our hearts. We want to obey. We want to hear. We thank you, Lord for all that you do and all that you will do in the future. It's in Jesus' wonderful name that we do pray and give you thanks, amen. Well, this morning, I have already been blessed by so many other messages, but I wanted to be able to come and bring you another word. One of the things that was just reminded or I was reminded of was the fact that we typically wanna hear from God. We're at the beginning of 2021 and all throughout 2020, there was so many requests and so many prayers, but we wanted to hear ultimately from God. We wanted him to solve our problems. We wanted to, him to get into the middle of our mess. We wanted him to be ever present, but we wanted to feel his presence and we wanted to hear him and we wanted to see his handiwork. Well, he did just that. We're still here. And yes, things are a little bit different, but I want to remind you that there's a way that we should fight. And so I wanted to talk about how we fight, how we fight, because there's always a fight that's brewing, honestly. There's always something that's coming up. And when we look at it, um, sometimes we recognize that things are not the way they seem. We think one thing is going to happen and then something else does. We look at how others maybe take advantage of us or when it seems that we are struggling and we're trying really, really hard and it doesn't come out or well, we can't seem to get our way because he's not truly our cosmic bellhop. When we want to be in control and we find that we're not. When all things are done or we've done all that we can and it's still not right. When life seems so fair, when others are seeming stubborn, when we really want peace and not the drama or the chaos, when the storms in life are raging <laughs> and you can't get a break, and when you're feeling like you're being pummeled by the outside world, and when you're not where you want to be, but you're not yet where you used to be and you're that in that in between in the middle of it what do you do how do you fight second chronicles chapter number 20 beginning at verse 6 and the bible says this is in the midst of uh jehoshaphat getting ready to pray and he says lord the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in the heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before our people Israel and give us forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of, of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. 
But now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. You see, many opportunities or many chances, we find ourselves in the midst of so much that is going on. And in the middle of all of that, we don't know what to do. Can you admit that sometimes you don't know what to do? I can admit that many times I don't know what to do, whether it be in business, whether it be with my health or whether it be if you're in the hospital, whether it be on your job, whether it be in your family, whether it's talking to your children. Sometimes we just don't know what to do. And the way we need to fight our battles is we need to rest. I know we don't like to hear that, but we truly do need to rest. What do I mean by that? If we look at 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, in verse 6, he says, rest in knowing who God is. Now, he wrote it this way. He said, are you not? the God who is in the heavens? Are you the ruler of all the kingdoms of the nations? Don't Isn't power and might in your hand and no one can withstand you? <laughs> he says, know who he is. And I'm reminded of uh, S.M. Lockridge as he wrote the famous, that's my king. And I'm calling it famous because I really love it. And he says, do you know him? He talks about him being a king. Who God is, God is this king. David said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. My king is sovereign as Lockridge writes. My king is sovereign. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far seen telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. Don't you want those bountiful blessings? He goes on to say that he's enduringly strong. He's entirely secure. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's empirically powerful and he's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands in the solitude of himself. I love that. He's awesome. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you could choose to call him. He's the only one qualified to be all sufficient efficient savior. Do you know him? But not only do you know him, because he talks about the fact in verse six that you've got to rest in knowing who God is. But in verse seven, we talk about the fact that you have to rest in knowing what he has done. You see in verse seven, it talks about the fact that um, God, did you not drive out all the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They lived in this land, but did you not drive them out? You're capable. You're more than capable. And as Lockridge goes on, he said, he is supply strength. He supplies strength to the weak. 
He's available for the tempted as well as the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives the sinners. He discharges the debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent and he beautifies the meek. I wonder. Do you know him? Well, he's the king of kings and he truly is the Lord of lords. But the Bible goes on and that's why I want you to rest. You rest not only in knowing who God is and you rest not only in knowing what he has done and you know that he's done some things for you as well, but you rest in what he is capable of doing when you get to verse nine. Because see, in verse nine, it says, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. It's not a matter of what you have done, but it's a matter of what you will do right now. You're gonna hear us and you're gonna save us. That's the God that we serve because we recognize that he is the key of knowledge, that he is the wellspring of wisdom. He is the doorway of deliverance. He is the pathway of peace. He is the roadway of righteousness. He is the highway of holiness and he is the gateway of glory. I wonder, do you know him? Because see, he really is indescribable. He is incomprehensible. He is invincible. And he is truly irresistible. What is he capable of? There's nothing impossible that God cannot do. With God, the Bible says in Luke, all things are possible. Ask Mary, how can you conceive a child without being with a man? I'm wondering if you really understand that God is more than able to do exceeding and abundantly. Because see, sometimes he will give you the bountiful blessings, a boatload of blessings, if you would, so much that you your nets are breaking and you've got to call on some partners to come and help with the haul, asked Peter. You might even get an angel that will come and fight on your behalf as Daniel. You might get a sun that stands still in the sky when you're fighting a battle as Joshua. If you might have some friends that will hold up your arms as Moses. You might have them even parting a red sea that lies in front of you when the enemies and the army is coming behind you as the children of Israel. He might even open a grave for you that you didn't even recognize, asked Jesus. Impossible blessings, or are they just opportunities for God to work and for you to truly hear from him? How do we fight our battles? We fight our battles on our knees, fight our battles from victory, fight our battles knowing that our savior is the one that is leading and guiding us knowing that God has our best interest at heart. And if it is not good, then he is truly not done. God is in the middle of every middle in your life. He's in the middle of every storm. He's in the middle of every peace. He's in the eye of that storm. He's in the in-between times from where you were to where you're going to be. He brings you a bountiful boatload of blessings to go along with it so that you have not room to receive. How do we fight? We fight from victory. We fight with our testimonies of the past. We fight with our partners and friends that have faith enough to get us through. We fight from a resting position, standing still and knowing that he is God. Let's bow. Father, we thank you for hearing us. 
We don't know what to do, but God, our eyes are truly on you. Thank you for knowing the end before the beginning. And while we're in the middle of it all, in the middle of a test and standing in the doorway of opportunity, you come in and you bring light and life and hope and healing and restoration. When we want and we see and we don't know how because they are repaying us with evil when we have done good. God, we thank you that you will rectify it all. For that we bless you. Help us to rest. Laying aside every weight, help us to rest. And I know I said it last week, I've been trying so hard, but I was not receiving. I asked that, Lord, we rest. We lay it all at your feet. And we rest in knowing who you are, knowing what you're capable of, recognizing what you've already done and what you will do because we are your children. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you. In Jesus' name we do pray and give you thanks. Well, God bless each and every one of you. May his favor be upon you for a thousand generations. For your family and your children, may you be healed and hold and delivered and set free for the true God that we serve is able to do all of that and then some. Be blessed. I'm Dr. Shanta Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. It has been my pleasure and my honor to serve you. Find us online at h the number two h truth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.